I uh, want to bring us into the world of arts. I think these conversations are really important, and I think that I like them a lot because um, I grew up in a very loud family of New Yorkers, so I really value this type of storytelling and all these important conversations. My favorite conversations um, this year um, have been about reflecting. You know, it's my senior year, and I'm graduating in a month, and sometimes I realize that I'm connecting with people for the last time. We could be at a party or at a, at a show, and I'm really trying to savor that moment. And my friend comes up to me in that, in that important moment and just asks, <laughs> so what are you doing after you graduate? <laughs> and we hate that person. That's not nice. We hate that question. And we hate questions like this because, because it's not about what they're asking. It's about what they're really asking, which is, <laughs> so are you going to be like remotely successful in life? Like, like should I respect you? <laughs> We're four years of all-nighters and paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, like, worth it? Or are you just going to die in the, you know, crushing defeat of your own worthlessness and bring shame to your family name? <laughs> that person can go home. Because we have this dichotomy, this fear, that you're either an investment banker or you're a starving artist. And I can't really tell you that that's a complete farce. But what I can tell you is that it's growing obsolete and fast. Elsie brought up before that, that the rise of the internet and social media has created a new landscape for how we live. But also, think about smartphone culture. Journalistic bodies and corporations don't have exclusive access to audiences anymore. You all do, and it's in your pocket. So for artists, that means that the, the possibilities are actually infinite. And how do we keep up with that? And that brings us to the newest evolution of the artist, an evolution that we're experiencing right now, which is the art entrepreneur. The artist that is equal parts business person and marketer, brand manager, accountant. And with this, we have arts entrepreneurship, which has a lot to say about how we can champion the creativity in our lives. So that's the evolution of the artists we're experiencing now. But before we get into detail, what evolutions of the artists have we already seen? I read the most fantastic article by William Derezowitz not long ago called The Death of the Artist and the rise of the creative entrepreneur, and in it, he details the four main evolutions of the artist that we've seen throughout time. The first is the artisan. The artisan is the craftsperson. We, we, served, we served apprenticeships, and we picked up traditions, and we, 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 we all talked like this, and we were middle class or lower. We were just doing our job. We were creative, but you know, we didn't see ourselves as geniuses or, or as mass cultural figures. Shakespeare, Shakespeare didn't see himself as con gay, okay? He was fashioning words together. He was a poet who had his tradition, put the words together, and that credibility came through the tradition. You didn't hear Shakespeare running through the town square, snatching Queen Elizabeth's crown and saying, <laughs> Well, that. <laughs> and this brings us to the second evolution of the artist, the genius. And this genius was romantic and young and rebellious and sticking it to the traditions. This is Beethoven and Rousseau. And this is more where Kanye could actually fit in. The spiritual gravitas of the artist as a genius. I can easily imagine what a Kanye feature on Beethoven's Fifth would sound like. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 honey. And then just... <laughs> You're stuck with me for like five more minutes, guys. Uh, and this genius gave way to uh, institutionalism. We began creating, creating uh, master's programs and erecting museums and opera houses so that we can create this stable, educational, bureaucratic apparatus. That brings us to the third evolution, the professional. And this professional artist found credibility through technique. You master technique, 
You built a resume, you applied to work in different universities and theaters, and you built that resume to perform and to teach. But that's where we get to this rise of smartphone culture. Technique is unfortunately, on balance, not always enough. So now in this infinite digital space, we have to become our own brand managers and our own accountants and our own developers. And that brings us to the fourth evolution of the artist, the one that we're experiencing right now, the art entrepreneur. Arts entrepreneurship is a cutting edge discipline at the crossroads of art, business, and innovation, where we apply lean startup principles from the automobile industry and technological industry, literally snatching it from the hands of nerds in their garage, and we apply it as the new energy driving our creative process. Also, if you really like buzzwords, you are in good company. But these buzzwords are actually really important. I'm going to go through a, a few today. We don't have a lot of time, but these have changed like, the, uh, the path of my life, and I think they can apply to like, our everyday lives. The first big one is the build, measure, learn feedback loop. We learned this in Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup. This process starts with building something. What is that big idea? You want to build what's called a minimum viable product, which is a product that can be full of bugs and problems, but the key is you don't waste your time building something and planning something to be perfect and then having people see it or consume it, which is typical of a lot of new kids. You know, we want to make something perfect. You build it fast, you get it out. And when I was in Chicago last summer, my first minimum viable product was a new character form that I created with my director, Jody McAuliffe. And we um, decided to use seven headbands. I really like headbands. Um, and I would put one at a time and transform into different characters. And then as I would transform into these different characters, I could take another headband, take this one off, and then, and then, and then I could put this headband on, and I was a new character. But I did not have time to prepare and write the perfect piece to perform. I had the idea, and then my director was like, yeah, get up and do it now. And by doing it right away when it was so not perfect, we found problems, structural ones, really early on. And then by doing that, we can measure the feedback right away. One main problem being taking on headbands and then taking them off is a very, very slow thing. So I was able to identify that problem really early on. Then I could fix it as equally early on when I learned about this. And then I could just start by wearing all the headbands at once and take each one off like really fast. And then it went really well and it was really funny. And Lawrence did a great job. Thanks. Um, so. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this process, um, where I got the piece after, when the whole piece was over, I could not have done with uh, planning and writing alone in my bedroom. I needed to get something that was like half ready, put it up, use the consumer feedback to either uh, persevere and stay the course, or pivot and change the course, and get to that final product. And then I have to think about all the arts entrepreneurs that we have already. Connie is a great example of someone who started as a producer, challenged himself sonically with rap over the past 10 years, uh, became an accomplished film director, and then, and then you know, uh, he's a rising shoe wear designer and fashion designer. But there's someone else I want to talk about, Miranda Sings. Do you guys know Miranda Sings? Yes, well, uh, she's a psychopath. Um, and what she does, she's a girl who, who many years ago wanted to make a video of a character who was horrible at singing but thought she was incredible. And so she just made the video and put it online. And then over the course of seven years, she kept creating these minimum viable products, new videos. She would take the audience feedback about things they hated, and then she would just do them a lot more. And then by seven years later, this character is nuts. But in that entrepreneurial process that took her seven years, she created a full-time career, producing videos for millions of subscribers, and, and touring the world with her, um, with her so, like, sold out shows, performing her one woman show, and now she's becoming a best selling author. The common denominator with um, Miranda Sings and all of the theater directors that I got to meet over the summer who are getting involved in art entrepreneurship is that this isn't something they could have applied for. And they couldn't have feared failure, especially failing in front of people. It's an ongoing process. And it's not really failure, it really is a scientific process. It's about having an idea, taking big steps, measuring those steps, breaking yourself down, and then rebuilding yourself back up. And I mean, that's literally what Baldwin is. 
Baldwin was a theater that we, we built. It, had, it, be, it started getting run down. It had acoustic problems. So we had to break it back down, build it back up, and now this space is actually breathtaking. And I like to think that in that same way, breaking yourself down, putting yourself back up, in that process, our lives can be breathtaking too. And I know what I am. I'm an arts entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. <laughs> That's not going to catch on. <laughs> but I'm not a starving artist. And I'm not an investment banker. I have this discipline. And I can build a network in Chicago out of this discipline. And I can, I, I can use the business acumen and the brand management that you learn through arts entrepreneurship to build a viable, meaningful career out of all of it. And maybe one day, I, I can be that guy that builds that creepy two beast on the beach. <laughs> I mean, really cool two beast if that guy's watching this later. <laughs> but, but the thing is, we're young, and, and we're too young to only play it safe. And for those of you who have that creative energy in you, who want to be artists, this is the future for art. This entrepreneurial drive, that energy behind art. And as far as I'm concerned, learning these disciplines makes art viable and makes us unstoppable. And I can't wait to graduate and take Chicago by storm. So what are you doing after you graduate? Thank you.